All right, you guys know that one of my favorite guys in this business is Vin Diesel. Vinny D. I love Vin Diesel. I think the dude's <laughs> amazing. I don't love every single movie they produce, Fast 9, for example, but I just think the dude is a great character. I think he adds so much to the business. I like the guy an awful lot. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> him and one of my other favorite guys in the business, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, do not get along. And, you know, Dwayne has said some not so great things about him and implying at one point uh, back in the day that, you know, one of the reasons he wanted out of the Fast and the Furious franchise was because he just felt like some of the guys there don't have the right work ethic. They don't take the business as seriously as I do. Now, so he stayed kind of vague about that. So anyway, fast forward now. Last week, we found out that Fast and the Furious 10 director, Justin Lin, who's directed, what, three other movies in the franchise? Five. Five other movies he in the franchise? Three, four, five, six. <clears throat> he didn't do seven and nine. Wow. Okay. So Justin Lin, super, super veteran of the Fast and the Furious franchise. We found out that he left after filming began. He just kind of up and left after filming began, which is very unusual. Like directors leaving, eh, not so terribly unusual. Especially the sixth movie in your mm -hmm. own franchise. Well, yeah. yeah. And especially once shooting has already started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it left nothing but a lot of wild speculation going around about, well, why? Like, what's what went on? Well, we might have found out why. Now, there's a story going around right now that I believe it was the New York Daily News that says they spoke to somebody close to the production and the person they spoke to, and Jonathan, if you want to scroll down here a bit, this person they spoke to said this. They said, I've never seen anything like it. Justin Lin is giving up on 10 to $20 million. Diesel shows up late to the set. He doesn't know his lines and he shows up out of shape. So basically he goes on to say that it's suggesting that the reason Lin left was because apparently Vin Diesel didn't come to work taking <laughs> it seriously. He, he, he didn't want to work hard enough or he didn't have the right work ethic. You know, as a sports fan, they're, one of the biggest sins that an athlete can do for us sports fans is show up out of shape. Like that's You'll hear so many sports fans complain about that when an athlete on their team shows up out of shape. That, that's, that, that's considered an insult to your team. That's considered an insult to your fans. That's considered a disrespect to the sport. All that kind of stuff, right? It's like when I watch UFC and a guy shows up for weigh-in and he shows up and he weighs five pounds over the limit. It's like, that's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to everybody. And when you're Vin Diesel and you're in this big, high-octane you know, action franchise, one of the big things of it is big Vin Diesel. He's big Vin, right? He's always in shape. Now, look, we don't know if this report is even real, right? Now, New York Daily News is saying they talked to a guy. They say they, they stand by it. That's great. So maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. But let's just talk about the statement as it's being reported. It's unfortunate as a big Vin Diesel fan to hear that, you know, he would show up late. Never like to hear that, especially no. when you're the boss, especially when you're the boss. You show up late. You show up not knowing your lines and you show up out of shape and this is the thing, too. Like, how can you expect when you're the big producer and you're kind of the guiding steering wheel of this franchise, how can you expect other people to put in work and effort and blood and sweat and tears when they see that the person putting in the least is you? Now, again, I'm saying that just based on the report. Hopefully, I'm, my fingers are crossed the report isn't accurate or isn't real or whatever stuff like that is. But it is kind of concerning and disappointing as a guy who has been a big Vin Diesel fan for a long time. And I still will be, but this is disappointing to hear if, that's an important distinction, if it's true. Hey guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Policy Genius. Now, when it comes to the topic of life insurance, I get it. A lot of people ask, well, why even get life insurance? Well, listen, if someone relies on you financially, whether it's a child, a parent, or a business partner, life insurance gives you peace of mind that they have a financial cushion if something were to happen to you. 
Policy Genius is here to help you, and they're going to make sure you pay as little for it as possible. By making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure you're not paying a cent more than you have to for the coverage you need. So here's how it works Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find the insurance that you need at the right price. Just click in the link down in the description or head on over to policygenius.com slash campia to get started. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. And the process is easy because the licensed agents at Policy Genius are on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options and make decisions with confidence. Because ultimately, the Policy Genius team works for you, not for the insurance companies. And you can feel confident with Policy Genius because they don't add on extra fees, they don't sell your information to third parties, and they have thousands of five star reviews all across Google and Trustpilot. So again, guys, head on over to policygenius.com slash campia or click on their link down in the description below to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. And thank you again to Policy Genius for sponsoring this episode. Rob, you hear this report. Number one, what stands out to you about it? What do you think the ramifications of it are? And, and what do you think the likelihood is that this is legitimate? Well, it's not the first time we've heard reports like this. I mean obviously the rock had some th things to say that that vin diesel didn't have the same work ethic he mm -hmm. did but i think for me it's it's perplexing because on a movie set you only have a certain amount of time in a day and all you get is that day to get shots to shoot what you need to shoot and and anytime something happens like you've got an entire army of people preventing anything bad from happening. If you're shooting on location, they make sure the location's locked down. Every every piece, every moving part in a movie is taken care of to make sure that you maximize your day. And all you get at the end of the day is what you've shot. And if your lead actor is preventing you from getting as much coverage as you need, the finished product is being compromised. Yeah. And And that to me, it doesn't matter, I mean, with the amount of money these movies cost, and all the stunts that are involved, it boggles the mind that anybody would show up unprepared and not ready to go. And uh, Justin Lin, you know, it's the it would have been his sixth Fast and Furious movie, and I'm sure I can't imagine something more frustrating than uh, you've you've already made you have an expectation of how the movie's going to go, and that your lead actor is letting you down, letting the crew down, letting the studio down, and ultimately letting the film down. And if your lead actor is compromising the movie, that's insane. And he's your producer. Yeah, and he's your producer. I, I mean, and you think the producer is the person that has to guard the budget. Yeah. Chris, you hear about this. I, I don't know. What's your reaction to it? Do you think it's accurate? I, I mean, what are your thoughts here? I mean, it's it feels accurate, right? Because we've had The Rock talk about this kinds of stuff. And while we all should aspire to have The Rock's work ethic, I don't know if all of us have that level. Um, but when you are an actor, there's a whole diatribe about this, right? If you're late, you're on, uh, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're screwed. And that's mm -hmm. how you get fired. When you're the boss, and I've only produced one set of films, um, and it was very, very low level, I made sure that I was the first person in the door every day because you set a precedent. It doesn't matter that you're just the money and you're paying everyone else. You have to be the person who says, hey, this is how we're going to do things. This is the standard we're going to set. So that's really disappointing to hear on one end, too. Um, he must have had a real, real issue with this, if this is the problem, to leave after that many films. Yeah. You know, and after filming, it already started. Yeah. And it it stinks when you work with somebody who is not at the level of your professional caliber. Right. It, yeah. it is really horrible when you feel like you have that dead weight when you are trying to really, really put your heart and soul into something. But IndieWire is reporting that they already have a new director, y'all. So really, they yep. are working with. Um, is it Louis? Louis? Louis Leterrier. Louis Leterrier. Yeah. He was my director on my feature film in which Edward Norton was my co-star <laughs> on my Hulk film. Yeah, I, I worked with Louis, a great guy. He, he and I spent many so months together talking <laughs> about, yes. You know, I was thinking about- It's an interesting choice. Yeah. Um, you know, a director gets fired if you fall behind. Yep. Like when they, when they so for those of you who don't know, you have a, a schedule for the day. You know, you've got, these are the scenes that we're shooting. These are expected we're shooting how many pages? Four and a half pages, three pages, whatever. And the studio looks at that. And if you don't make your day, the first person who's in trouble is the director. 
if they were behind like one or two or three days, Justin Lin's like, I, I'm not going to put up with this because it <clears throat> compromises him with the studio. And that is a bad place to well, be. Well, the, the, the one thing that we haven't talked a lot about in this report is that fact that it sounded like how bad must it have been for Justin Lin to say, because honestly, if I'm just irritated, I'm sticking it out and collecting my $15 million or $20 million, whatever it's the report said he was going to get. So how bad must he have it have been, if this report is accurate, that he was willing to not just walk away from the job, walking away from 10 to $20 million? I mean, that's got to be a pretty bad day. A anyway, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about this report we're seeing coming out of New York there? Uh, look, number one, this might be complete BS. It might be completely untrue. I'm personally going to keep my fingers crossed and hope that it is. But if it's not... What do you think about it? Are you surprised? Are you not surprised? Does this kind of justify even further the what The Rock was saying about it and, and leaving the franchise? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.